Welcome to another UCL Fantasy video. This is going to be a team selection for match day two. I'm also going to be recapping on how match day one went. Not the best start, but I'm looking at ways to improve my team. And I'm going to be talking about all of my transfer plans, the captaincy, the substitutions, and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's head straight into the video. As I mentioned in my intro, it's a very poor start so far with 58 points. I'm around 338k in the world. Having said that, there's still a bit of time left to make amends, but it's only 13 match days compared to FPL where you have 38 game weeks where you probably have a bit more time to make mistakes. Here, you want to rectify them as soon as possible. And at the same time, you don't want to be taking too many hits. And that's something I always talk about. And you feel free to watch my earlier videos where I break down the game if you have any further questions about certain aspects. And if you want, I know a lot of you will be thinking about using the Limitless chip in match day two. Let me know if you want to see a video dedicated to that where I show the best Limitless team you can make. And it actually might be something I do in the end. But at this moment in time, I'm just thinking about my normal team. And I may use the Limitless in match day three, four or five instead. But obviously match day two has the same fixtures as match day five. So therefore, it's still a very good time to use it. And there's also match day six. But I just think there's a lot of rotation. So it might be going with one of the match days I said instead. But here we go with match day one. This is how I did so far. Both of my goalkeepers blanked. Uh, Musso actually got some save points because he did concede two goals um, to Villarreal. So not the best start, but as I expected, he is the number one keeper for Atalanta. The only reason he didn't play over the weekend heading into that match day one fixture was because he arrived late from international duty with Argentina. And he made five saves, actually. So he was one save away from getting an additional point. Um, and then in the end, Kobol came on and conceded in the final dying embers of the game, unfortunately, to Besiktas, who actually, to their credit, they have actually been pretty impressive this season so far. And they could actually be a bit surprising in this group. And of course, towards the end, they caused Dortmund some problems. Uh, but of course, you know, Dortmund have a lot of attacking quality. And Kobol was, once again, one save away from getting a, a save point. Uh, but it, it is what it is. You know, you can't really be expecting that all the time. And now even more disappointing, here you can see Juan Bissaka minus three points. And unfortunately, if someone gets sent off for you, you cannot substitute them out despite being able to substitute anyone else out pretty much. Uh, but you can't do it for someone who is sent off. So minus three points, he's suspended for the next game. And honestly, around five million, I'm just not really too convinced with most of the options. There is Hummels and Akanji who do stand out in terms of ball recovery points. But in terms of clean sheet potential as well, you're mainly looking at the Chelsea players like Aspilicueta, Christiansen, etc. And Wan-Bissaka just was awful, of course, and it changed the game for Manchester United. And they lost in the end to Young Boys, which was very shocking. But that's football for you, and one moment like that can change the game. And in my case, it's changed my match day, in my opinion. And of course, you know, losing three points from a player, not being able to sub them out, it is obviously quite hard to stomach, but it is, you know, the, the kind of rules from UCL Fantasy from years ago, really. Then we have the double Chelsea defence. This is one of the best things about this game week, and this is why I've pretty much always trusted Chelsea defenders. In FPL, as I talked about in my FPL team selection video, if you haven't already checked that out, I want to be getting double Chelsea defence. And as you can see here, Rudiger with nine ball recoveries, a clean sheet. And that's what I like about him. He gets a lot of uh, ball recoveries, which accumulates his points even further. Um, so in essence, it's like getting bonus points in FPL. So Rudiger, for that reason, for being nailed and getting ball recovery points, that's why I picked him over Reese James. Of course, there's still Marcus Alonso, who's fairly nailed at this moment in time. He can get a few ball recoveries too, as well as attacking potential. But Rudiger is just a safe pick. And Aspilicueta at 5 million is an absolute bargain. Compare that to FPL where he's 6 million. And that's where he's a bit less attractive of an option. But in this, look, a lot of ball recovery points. He would have gotten double digits if it wasn't for the yellow card. He did get an assist, of course, which did help things. And he was, once again, one ball recovery away from getting an extra point. But pretty happy with Aspilicueta. Juventus up next. They've actually been improving recently, not only in the Champions League, but also in Serie A. So that's something worth considering. But uh, I would still expect Chelsea to do well in that game. Maybe they won't keep a clean sheet away from home but it's still a possibility is Chelsea after all. And then Diego Carlos with four points. And, uh, you know, I was talking about Acuna being a bit prone to yellow cards. And in the end, it was Diego Carlos who got one. 
13 ball recoveries though that's why I wanted Diego Carlos he's a ball recovery machine and uh, yeah that's just a very impressive display obviously a bit of a shame that he considered the penalty and that's how he got the yellow card and Salzburg scored and equalized um, so that group should be fairly interesting I'd still expect Sevilla to top it maybe finish second you never know though the other teams in the group could be fairly evenly balanced to be honest but Diego Carlos with the ball recoveries he has I think he's one of the best options at 4.5 million and then looking at the other defender I got this completely wrong with the 4 million defenders Alberto Moreno he was starting every single game this season for Villarreal in the Super Cup against Chelsea in La Liga and in this game he didn't start he came off the bench and then you look at other 4 million options like Roussillon he started, he got eight points, and obviously I wish I went there instead. And I will be talking about Rossillon later on. Hopefully I got the pronunciation right. I've been checking uh, in my spare time. You know, hopefully that's not too weird. And then looking at the midfielders, a bit better, I'd say. The defence was very disappointing, other than the Chelsea lads and maybe Diego Carlos. Uh, but looking at the midfielders, Salah, wow, five points and he scored. I mean, how does that work? Because he misses a penalty and... Um, yeah, I mean, it is a bit of a shame he missed the penalty. He never misses them, really. So so it was a bit of a shock, to be honest. Uh, but of course, you know, Milan have a very good keeper as well. And with Salah as well, he could have maybe gotten a few more assists. But still a great option. Maybe, of course, with the group, in hindsight, you could think, well, you can spend that money better elsewhere and spread the funds across your whole team. Maybe, but Salah is still an option that I trust a lot. I expect him to score three or four goals across the group stages and he can get an assist or two. So he's still a great option, in my opinion. A relative differential at 23%. And there's not many chances where you're going to be able to get a player as consistent as Salah in terms of goal output for only 10.5 million as a midfielder. Obviously, I think that's still a great price for him. The fixtures aren't the greatest, of course, and that should be a fairly tough group for Liverpool and the rest of them. Gundogan didn't start, and that was a big shame, and that pretty much summed up my week, along with wan red card. But he came on, and in half an hour, he got an assist. Maybe not as impressive as Rashford coming on for half an hour last season against Leipzig and scoring a hat-trick, but an assist, you know, with only 31 minutes played, I'll take that. I think that's obviously a very good return, considering how badly it could have gone. I subbed him on, obviously, before the lineups came out because we didn't know what Manchester City's lineup would be after the deadline passed, but it is what it is. PSG up next, though. I'm not really too confident about Gundogan and even Mbappe in that fixture. I've got both of them, so that will be a bit of a kind of concern there. And then Casemiro, ball recovery machine, as always, to be honest. And yeah, he, that's pretty much why you get him. There's no other reason. And one ball recovery away from a point, same with Salah and all these other you know players. So you could say a bit unlucky there. Um, also got the clean sheet point and Sheriff up next, you know. So if you are on a limitless, getting some Real Madrid players like Hazard, Benzema, Vinicius Jr., especially the last two that I mentioned, they actually combined uh, for several goals this season. And in La Liga, they've actually scored 11 goals between them, which is more than every other La Liga team. So that's something very interesting to note there. And Casemiro is still quite low ownership, but of course, he's only 6.5 million. And if we look around 7 million, Bellingham was the standout this week with 15 points. So very impressive. Fair play to any of you who do have him. And of course, once again, I do wish that I had him myself. Jorginho, I subbed off. He had four points. With him, he's mainly going to get ball recovery points for you and a clean sheet point because Chelsea are that good defensively. Um, not too many attacking returns, I would expect, but he should start the majority of the games. Uh, then again, though, at six million, he's a good player. But obviously, you know... <laughs> maybe one kind of weakness of this team is not spreading the money enough and then having some more you know kind of differential players at maybe slightly higher prices like Bellingham like Marco Royce who could do really well in Dortmund's group and then we've got Alvarez I didn't decide to sub him in I just saw his ceiling as three or four points with the other players I subbed in I thought they could get five or more so I didn't bring on Alvarez and it was the right decision he got a yellow card um, obviously that's a bit unfortunate for those who brought him in um, but yeah he's just a decent 4.5 million option who plays you're not going to get too much else out of him but there's going to be the occasional match day I believe where he's going to get four to five points because of the ball recovery so let's wait and see what happens there and then looking at the forwards Mbappe got an assist but PSG were very underwhelming against Club Bruges I was very surprised at how lackluster they were and that continued even against Lyon um, just yesterday actually where Messi got substituted out. I mean, what a sight that is. Mbappe actually assisted the winner for Icardi, and he got the assist here for Ander Herrera against Club Bruges. But Mbappe against Manchester City up next, he can still do well, but I just don't know. You know that's a really tough game to call. And if PSG, if they play the way they've been playing recently, 
I expect City to win that game, to be honest. PSG need to improve, um, so let's wait and see what they do. But Mbappe, you can always go to a Lukaku. Um, a Lewandowski who's got great fixtures from now on, and he's obviously um, been doing so well, and he hasn't actually blanked in 19 matches, Lewandowski. So he's someone that, of course, is a no-brainer, and I am thinking of getting him in. A little spoiler alert there. And then Cristiano Ronaldo scored yet again. Didn't do too much else, and obviously in the end, going for him over Lukaku. Lukaku got a man of the match point, so he got nine in total. But in the end of the day, you know, Ronaldo did score. You can't complain too much, and he's been so consistent. He hasn't blanked since returning to Manchester United, even the Premier League. He scored against West Ham, scored twice against Newcastle. So I'd expect him to continue his fine goal scoring form. He's got two home matches in a row now against Villarreal and Atalanta. Not the easiest of fixtures, but you would expect him to score in one of them at least. And he's owned by half the game, so he is definitely a big template pick. And if you go without him and he hauls, uh, you might be in a bit of a precarious situation. But then again, we've got so many forward options, as I discussed earlier, that it's not really too bad, in my opinion. Then looking at the man, the myth, the legend, Erling Haaland. I mean, this guy is an absolute monster, and his record is absolutely insane. And I believe for Borussia Dortmund, he now has more goals than games played, which for his age as well is unbelievable. And he even got a ball recovery point. So, you know, something extra there, scored a goal. And he's got Sporting Lisbon next, and that's the team that Haller scored four goals against. So that's something definitely worth keeping an eye on. And Haaland could easily do the same thing, to be honest. So let's wait and see what happens there. He is definitely an easy captaincy choice. But remember, you can change the captaincy between each day. And uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. But that's kind of my overview of match day one. Some good kind of parts, you know, all of my forwards got an attacking return. Uh, some of my midfielders were all right, especially considering, you know, some of the limited minutes and missing penalties and stuff like that. wan obviously very disappointing. My goalkeepers both blanked. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that's just how football and UCL fantasy is. Moving on to match day two, this is how my team is currently lining up. And remember, you want to have on your bench those who are playing on the final day. So in this case, it would be the 29th of September. Anyone who's playing on the 28th of September, make sure to put them in your starting 11 so you have complete control over your substitutions and you can do them manually and also the captaincy captain someone on the 28th of September and if they don't do as well as you hope then captain someone on the 29th of September and if you have any further questions like I said you can watch my how to play guide of UCL fantasy and same with my first draft video where I break down the game completely and anyone who's new even some who just need a refresh you will have all the information you need right there and yeah pretty much the same thing happens again obviously the kind of fixtures are reversed so Koble who played on the second day last time he's playing on the first day he's in my starting 11 same with Diego Carlos, Rudiger, Aspilicueta, Alvarez, Gundogan, Casemiro, Salah, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Haaland, captain. And once again, kind of my two big doubts heading into match day two is Mbappe and wan -Bissaka. Obviously, wan -Bissaka getting minus three points and being suspended. He is someone I need to get rid of. And there are different kind of avenues um, that I can, you know, get to certain players like Lewandowski, Kimmich and the like. And I will be discussing that very shortly. But in terms of the captaincy, I'm going to keep it very simple this week. Erling Haaland is definitely going to be my captain on the Tuesday, unless I somehow change my mind and maybe I'd be foolish to do so. And as things stand, you know, if I keep this team in structure, Ronaldo would be my captain on the second day. However, if we actually look, um, Bayern Munich also play on the second day. And if I bring in a certain Lewandowski, then I think he would become my captain for sure, even ahead of Ronaldo, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that's how my team is looking like at the moment. And I'm not really too pleased with it, if I'm being completely honest. And Gundogan is also another weakness, you could say. My goalkeepers, I mean, fair enough. You know, I never trusted Borussia Dortmund um, defensively. 4.5 million for a Dortmund goalkeeper is still good. But I do have my reservations about him. Salah as well, 10.5 million. Difficult group. I still expect him to do well. But of course, this team is far from perfect. And that's why I got 58 points in the end. And Moreno, definitely. He's someone that, of course, I probably wouldn't want to have going into the long term. Especially, you know, facing Manchester United twice. Um, but unfortunately, I might not be able to get rid of him heading into match day two. So that's pretty much it. Of course, I've got a few weaknesses there. But then again, some good strong points. And hopefully I can build upon my Chelsea defenders, Haaland. But then again, you know, Chelsea are facing Juventus. It's not the easiest game. And moving on to my transfer plans, what I am considering is getting Roussillon in for wan -Bissaka. I get an extra million. And that is exactly what I need to do Mbappe to Lewandowski for two free transfers. Remember, you get two free transfers heading into each 
match day within the group stages and then it increases and changes. But another thing I could do actually is get Sebastian Haller or another cheap striker. I can get him in for Ronaldo and of course that's very risky. Get Lewandowski and then instead of Roussillon I could get Kimmich in the defence ahead of Dynamo Kiev and a very good group stage I think for Bayern Munich for a minus four hit. Now I don't like taking hits, especially in UCL Fantasy where you only have 13 match days, but I think getting a Bayern defender who pretty much plays as a midfielder who can create so many chances and get so many points from ball recoveries, goals, assists, clean sheets and everything like Kimmich, getting Lewandowski who could be the best captaincy shout period in match day two and getting Haller who has a good fixture in my opinion against Besiktas, not the greatest though, I think Besiktas are pretty decent but Ajax could still score two or three past them, I think that could be a reasonable hit but at this moment in time and I did put a poll out and most of you said these two transfers are the best and I'm inclined to agree to be honest, avoiding taking a hit avoid getting rid of Ronaldo who can still do really well this week, getting rid of Mbappe and Wambisaka, two of my weak links heading into match day two and getting Lewandowski and Roussillon and then going forward of course I can then change certain things and then maybe upgrade Moreno to another defender, maybe Kimmich but it depends obviously how I think about uh, going forward but of course these are my initial team selection kind of plans and I talked about my substitutions and my captains and it's good to have a plan but try to be open-minded as well I may make some changes from this video and I'll let you guys know of course in future deadline streams and community posts so be sure to check them out as well and still you know there's a few glaring issues in this team even with Lewandowski and Roussillon coming in uh, such as Moreno Alvarez is obviously not the best cover but he's only 4.5 million and he's a midfielder so very cheap Gundogan I'm not really too convinced about and Bellingham or Royce you know if I could have one of them I probably would be going for them Dortmund could easily score two or three in most of these games Ajax would be a difficult fixture but the others I think Dortmund are capable of scoring a lot of goals especially against Sporting Lisbon but those are my initial thoughts heading into match day two let me know what you think of my team selection and what issues do you have which transfers are you going to make? Who are you going to captain? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed it, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. And thank you, obviously, once again for helping me reach 5,000 subscribers and to continue to support the channel in all of the live streams with the super chats. Shout out once again to the new channel members, Rodrigo Arias and Rock and Roll. Really appreciate you joining the channel. And let me know what other type of videos you want to see on this channel regarding UCL Fantasy. So apart from the team selection videos and also the deadline streams, they could be, for example, between each match day, there can be a best wildcard team heading into match day three. In match day two, there can be a best limitless team where it's probably going to be a very popular week uh, for the chip. And I may actually use the limitless chip in match day two. If not, later on in the group stages, I'll let you guys know, of course. And if that is the case, then yeah, that will definitely be an interesting turn of events. But that's definitely possible. And of course, there could be a chip strategy guide as well. And I've got kind of some different ideas this time around. I tend to use both chips in the group stages. However, like I discussed before, I may save one of those chips for the knockout stages. Uh, so if you want to see my opinions on the chip strategy, then feel free to comment down below. Thank you very much for all the support. Like I said, enjoy the football. Good luck with UCL Fantasy and FPL. And I'll see you next time.